Praise God, everybody. This is CJ Jackson, and I am just, just wonderfully in a place of just gratefulness and just in a place of giving God glory because he is wonderful and he is worthy to be praised. And I'm hoping that you are in the same capacity. And there is so much gloom and doom in the world. And there are so many people who are just aggravated, frustrated, and just want to just throw tiles at everything they possibly can because they are just in a place that is messy and fussy. Amen. But when you know that God is good, it doesn't just mean that it's just based on the circumstances. It's based on how you face life. It's not based on what's happening in life. It's based on how you face life. It's based on an inside job. And you've heard me say this before. You cannot change nothing, but you can change everything by how you change everything that you face. Amen. I can't change you, but I can change how I face you. Amen. I can't change nobody, but I can change how I face everybody. Amen. So I am glad that you were here. I'm hoping that you have an open ear, an open mind, an open soul, an open spirit, an open heart, and you are ready to receive what the Lord has given me today to get into the world that I think to some degree we have kind of shelter it and we have put it in a place, we have kind of captured it in a place where we seem to kind of just think it's only supposed to be in one capacity. And we're going to talk a little bit about parenting. Amen. Parenting. And I know that some of us would like to deal with parenting one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm not. I'm going to deal with just parenting from what I see in the Bible. And I'm going to talk today really about fathering. And, and I'm going to try to expand your minds and see it from a different perspective, because I think we got to see parenting much more wider than we do, because from God's perspective, parenting is beyond blood. Let me say this again. Parenting is beyond blood. Everything that we have been taught seems to be so fixated on blood that we get caught up. Remember, Jesus. Let's just go there. Jesus' mom and dad literally were not actually his mother and father to the extent of him being who he was. Yes, they were connected to him, but he was the immaculate child. And his birth, as it is, was one that was really unique. And his father was really unique. His mother was really unique. He was implanted from a very miraculous situation, and his situation was very much one that is out of the norm. And we got to recognize that there's a lot of situations that we can see throughout history that God has given us the indication about some things that is not about blood as it is about the spirit. And I'm going to show you that because that's really what God really wanted out of the body of Christ. It's not about the blood. It's about the spirit. And that's why he was trying to use Abraham to be the father of many nations. <laughs> they were not going to be all blood related. Little did Abraham know that, but they were going to be related because that was just God's overall agenda. Amen. So follow me because we're going to get rather deep as we go into some areas of fathering. And I'm going to use a text from the Old Testament. We're going to go into the last um, um, prophet of the Old Testament, which is the prophet Malachi. And I want you to hear some of the very last words the prophet had to share. I'm not going to go into the point of emphasis. I want to share first I thought it would be, do us some due diligence to go into the first portion that he had to share in some of his last words and then transition to the point of emphasis that I wanted to share that deal with what he had to say about fathers. Amen. So if you would follow me in Malachi chapter four, beginning at verse one, 
we'll start there and then we will just continue to talk about fathers and hopefully we're going to go in a whole different direction about fathers i know some of you are talking about you know fatherhood at home but i want you exp i want to expand your whole concept about fathers amen think outside of the box men think outside of the box amen look further than how you have been looking at fatherhood so the bible says for behold the day is coming burning like an oven all the proud yes all who do wickedly will be stubble and the day which is coming shall burn them up says the lord of hosts they will leave them neither root nor branch but to you who fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings and shall go out and shall and shall grow fat like stall fed calves and shall trample the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet and on the day that i do this says the lord of hosts remember the law of moses my servant which i commanded him in horeb for all israel with the statues and judgments behold i will send you elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the lord and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers lest i come and strike with uh, strike the earth with a curse deep stuff okay deep stuff now for those of us that don't know this was prophecy prophecy by the prophet malachi he is talking about several things that are going to transpire before the coming of his son jesus christ and if you read in the text he says the son of righteousness he doesn't use s o n he uses s u n and several times jesus is recognized as the s u n and not just the s o n why what does the son do the son is used as an illuminator as a radiant force the sun will actually bring something that if the heat is right in certain places it will bring forth a light that those that cannot handle the light will be able to have a light that the darkness cannot handle it and therefore it will be extremely too much to deal with because of the light so he is called the son of righteousness s-u-n and not just s-o-n and then he says with healing in his wings so you got to recognize that jesus is also <laughs> one that has wings he has wings and his wings has healing he has healing in his wings he his objective is to bring forth healing what did he do when he came to the face of the earth he brought healing healing to the lame healing to the weak healing to the lost healing to those that were destitute healing to those that were hungry healing to the blind healing to the lame healing to those that were diseased healing to those that were filled with demons healing to those that were paralyzed healing to those that had blood ailments he brought healing this is what jesus did then he says and you shall go out and grow fat like stall fed calves so he's talking about that you shall be able to have substantial needs facilitated you shall be able to have fulfillment you shall be able to have things to the point where you shall be fed 
you will be able to have your needs facilitated. God is going to use his son to take care of you. Remember, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Remember, he wasn't talking about the afterlife because he said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come in this life that you might have life and have it more abundantly right now. That's what he was talking about. And then he says, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. Who? The wicked. The wicked will be like ashes under the soles of your feet. How is that possible? Because you were walking in righteousness. You have to understand righteousness has no chance with those, or I should say wickedness has no chance with dealing with those that stand in righteousness. No chance, no chance, no chance at all. God wants us to understand that. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Oh my goodness. Have you had a lot of things added unto you? <laughs> you see, a lot of us are still waiting for things added unto us because you did not seek righteousness. You've been seeking stuff, but did you seek righteousness? You know, seeking has a mentality that it is like a, a, a tenacity. It is a movement that says, I am going to go out and get it. It is a pursuit. It is a, it is a, a movement that is motivated. It has a, 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 a stick-to-itiveness, if you will, that it is going to be generated with a motivation that is going to go and get it. And so if you don't have it, 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 the, the, then you don't see it. You don't see the things that come along when you seek righteousness. So I'm speaking to a small audience. It's because you have not sought out righteousness. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible goes on to say, on this day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of Moses. Remember, God never said to forget the law of Moses. I don't know where anybody got that from. He never said, forget it. He said, remember it. Okay. Some of us think that God wants us to forget it. No, no, no. He wants us to remember it. Why? There's some things we need to take under consideration so we can live more effectively. Remember the law of Moses, my servant. We need to remember some things. Amen. Which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel. He didn't say, commanded you. He said, I wanted you to remember. Listen, I wanted you to remember. He said, I commanded. No. He said, I want you to remember. Remember this now. This is important. He didn't say that I, I'm commanding you this. He said, I wanted you to remember this. <laughs> he said, with the statues and judgments, behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. Wait a minute. Elijah died a long time ago. Way long time ago. So he's not talking about the Elijah. He's talking about another so-called Elijah that we read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that Elijah is John the Baptist. That's the other Elijah. He's talking about that Elijah is the one that he's talking about. So he's talking about a futuristic Elijah that is yet to come. This was a prophecy by the prophet of Malachi about this new so-called Elijah. And he says, before the coming and the great dreadful day of the Lord, before the coming and the dreadful day of the Lord. Wow. So Elisha was before the coming of Christ. You see, the coming of Christ is really saying that this is going to be the very end of everything. I don't think people really understand that. Yes, it is the beginning of having life. It is the beginning of having Christ. 
but it is a sign of the end. Jesus tried to tell us that. He tried to tell us that all the way back in Matthew chapter 7. He tried to tell us that. He tried to tell us that in Matthew 23 and chapter 24. He tried to tell us that, but it was the dreadful end as well as the beginning. It was the end. It was setting things up for the end. Come on, somebody. I hope you guys are getting this. Now, remember, we're talking about fathers, but I'm I'm trying to share this with you because this is what men are needing to have articulated to share to men. Because what we're dealing with right now is a world filled with passivity in the area of manhood. We don't want to stand up and be men and tell men how to be men, how to live as men, how to act like a man, how to be a man, how to be a husband, how to perform as a man, how to live as a man, because we feel it's not our role and responsibility. Who told you that? Because certainly it wasn't God. Follow me. The Bible says, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Huh. Who was this? Elijah. Elijah went out and his goal was to get men to become men. You read your Bibles. He wanted men to start being men. He got soldiers, he got tax collectors, he got ordinary men, he got everybody. The only ones that didn't want to be real men was the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, and he called them brood of vipers. He said, you just came out here to check me out. You really have no intention on repenting. Get. He didn't really want to, they didn't really want to change, and he knew it. But those men that came all the way out to the desert to see him to be baptized, he said, okay, you're ready for real fruits of repentance. This is what you got to do. And ladies and gentlemen, if we want to help men to be real men, we got to be real with men. This is the first area we got to do. We got to stop evading, walking away, walking on eggshells, stop like saying, I, I, I'm not going to get in it. I don't want to be the culprit. I don't want to be the bad guy. You're not the, the bad guy. You're the good guy when you speak truth. Listen, when you speak truth, you're the good guy. I don't know who told you that if you say something that's the truth, you're the bad guy. No, truth is always the divine area of releasing that which is a representation of God. Remember that. We're going to end on this note because we can go much further. And we don't want to go much further without revealing much more that needs to be revealed. Every ounce of information that we are sharing needs to be identified from that which we know is the source, the Word of God. So without further delay, we're going to go ahead and end our time with knowing that you are a blessing. So live like one. Amen.